Today is a video that I'm very excited to make, okay? That is the digital banking comparisons between maybe the three largest players in this space. I'm talking about SoFi Technologies, Block Incorporated, or Cash App, and then New Bank all the way over in Latin America. As you're about to see, the formula has changed quite a bit in this spreadsheet. I've increased the timeline a lot to increase more of the historic data that we're looking at for these companies, as well as all the member and growth rates for these uh, companies, the revenues, revenue per member, co customer acquisition costs, net income, and then I've also squeezed in dilution, how much of that business is actually being lost to maybe something like stock-based compensation, for example. Now, without further ado, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's jump into it. First off, you can tell that the customer accounts for SoFi versus New Bank and Cash App is much, much smaller. It's a much smaller business. In the most recent quarter, Q2 of 2023, SoFi has 6 million members, where New Bank has 83.7 million and Cash App has 54 million. Okay? And then in the gray section here is all the percentages uh, difference between those customer accounts. So New uh, New Bank versus SoFi at one point was like almost 17x, and then over here it's only about 13x because SoFi is actually growing faster now, but they still are a much, much smaller company. To help visualize this, I did do charts for all of these statistics, both in customer count, customer growth rates, and then also the customer count differences, which you can see I'm kind of blocking it there. But this will help visualize everything for you guys, and we can always return back to this video and, and look at it if you guys need this. Hopefully, the extended timelines will also help visualize the growth even further. I mean, you know, New Bank is just looking unbelievable in these trends right now. That being said, uh, going back to here, this is not the only statistic to actually measure the growth of all these companies. I also want to look at revenue, for example. But now, whenever we actually look at the revenue, you can see that SoFi, for example, has went from 200 million up to $508 million. In the matter of almost three years, they've two and a half X'd their total revenue. Whereas New Bank, this is where things start to get interesting. At 156 million, that has climbed to 1.86 billion, okay? A growth rate of like over 10 X. That's like what, over 12 X, uh, uh, actually. And then Cash App, 466 million, up to 1.2 million. And whenever we're excluding Bitcoin and just looking at the fintech side, I've also added in, you know, the actual company's total, but that's just because, uh, you know, help visualize that. But we're just looking at the actual fintech side. It still has also seen amazing growth rates compared to SoFi. Whenever we go back and actually visualize this, we can see that the revenue uh, has sort of gone in, you know, the biggest favor for, for New Bank. Cash App is second place for that sort of growth, and then SoFi being the last. Now, revenue doesn't mean everything, but it is still something to actually chart out. Then, in terms of revenue differences, the, this is just showing, uh, you know, comparatively, whenever we're looking at New Bank versus SoFi or Cash App versus SoFi, where are they sort of changing? Whenever we're looking at New versus SoFi, New Bank is continuously seeing higher and higher differences between the two, meaning they're way outpacing their growth. Whenever we look at Cash App versus SoFi, it's actually in the matter of SoFi is actually gaining a little bit better of a, of a growth standard compared to them, meaning Cash App is slowing down, and, and SoFi is starting to ramp up. It's best seen in these trend lines for sure to see which one is sort of winning out. The New Bank versus Cash App, once again, it is in New Bank's favor with the higher growth trend, meaning that it's, you know, New Bank is outpacing both of them. Then on the revenue growth side, this just helps visualize all of it, put it together, both the revenue trends and then also the growth rates, um, you know, something to look back on. That being said, let's jump over into revenue per member. Whenever we look at this, things get quite interesting. If people know much about SoFi, they are in a little bit different of an industry than New Bank and Cash App because they go after more of an affluent user, meaning, you know, higher FICOs, higher average incomes, meaning you can charge more. Uh, that being said, though, New Bank and Cash App are growing probably at a much faster pace than what SoFi is. And we'll look at that because as you can see back in Q3 of 2020, SoFi used to bring in a much higher average revenue per user back whenever they were more lending focused than what they've been getting into. So the revenue per member was at $110 back then all the way to today where it's $67 per person. See, the reason why this has actually gone down is because they've gotten into new things like 
you know, SoFi Relay or SoFi's, you know, uh, checking and savings products, which might actually not be as profitable as things like student or personal loans. Whereas Nubank has gotten into the complete opposite area. They've gotten into more profitable segments, uh, which has completely changed their structure for how they're looking at revenue per member, going from $6 per person and climbing at a dramatic pace all the way to $22, uh, you know, $22.33, uh, closing that gap between SoFi and Nubank. And Cash App also closing that gap, but maybe not as that significant of a pace, going from $13.73 all the way over to $22.39. And then you can see the revenue per members across all of these and how they actually differ between them. Going back though, let's visualize this, okay? What we can see is that the revenue per member for SoFi is actually decreasing. This is not a bad thing. It's because they're diversifying into so many more areas. It's what's led us to having this high, high, uh, you know, customer count growth, the fastest amongst the three. But that also means that on a per member basis, they're not as good as just having lending partners. Whereas look at the difference between Cash App and New Bank back in Q3 uh, of 2022. Cash App was practically double. Now all the way to this quarter, and it might actually be in the favor of uh, New Bank now, 2233 to 2239. Very, very close. Cash App just squeaks it out. I'm sure next quarter. It's going to be very hard for Cash App to beat Nubank if they continue at this growth rate. Uh, it's best seen on these trend lines here how, you know, Cash App was much, much higher and then slowly is just, you know, has passed that inflection point and now Nubank is starting to pass them once again. Revenue, uh, sorry, revenue per member growth. Look at the growth rates for Nubank. That purple line is sticking much, much higher than any of the other competitors. Um, and yeah, just continuously being extremely competitive there. And then the differences between them, like Nubank is just showing that they are one, like this was the this was the trajectory before. Nubank, or sorry, SoFi used to bring in almost 18 times the amount of revenue per person uh, on their platform. To today, you're looking at about three, uh, three times. So from 18 times to three times, it's a massive, massive uh, gap that New Bank has closed, making making it look so easy in their growth rates. Unbelievable. But it all depends on how much they've also acquired a customer for as well. Now, looking at customer acquisition costs, this is where I find the differences really get made, and it's probably the most important statistic out of all of these. Okay, how efficient can you bring on a customer? Uh, SoFi obviously looking very, very different than uh, the new bank here, 220 versus a dollar uh, in Q3 of 2020. But let's understand this. The CAC to ARPU ratio, which is customer acquisition cost to average revenue per user for SoFi was 50% at one point back in Q3 of 2020. That means per quarter, SoFi is bringing on $110 per person per quarter. Then uh, they actually acquired that customer for $220, which means it would take two quarters to make back that amount, or they're making uh, back about 50% of the acquisition costs. As time went on, this ratio had depleted all the way to 22%, uh, almost 23%, meaning it's going to take many quarters to replenish this $300 customer acquisition cost. At one point, it was 19%, where they were bringing on $73 per quarter per person and acquiring them for $384. You know, very, very luckily, we're starting to see that trend line reverse. Hopefully, that continues. New Bank, on the other hand, is, is a little bit different. However, still seeing things like a dropping in the ratio, but they're just starting at a completely different spot here. You know, bringing on a customer for a dollar and fourteen cents, and having them bring back in the same quarter six dollars and twenty-two cents. As time goes on, this has even gotten even more efficient. Or, well, the the everything has climbed. The customer acquisition, co or, or sorry, customer acquisition cost and the revenue per member has both gone up, meaning the ratio has gone down, but still, still very, very efficient. Look at this. Even at one point last quarter, four hundred seventy-eight percent, unbelievable, and still. 300% acquiring a customer for $7.37. And in that same quarter, they return them $22.33, meaning you can take that money uh, already and put that back into acquiring more customers. That's why we're seeing the customer growth rates for New Bank being so high. Uh, Cash App, same thing. Very low customer acquisition cost compared to how much uh, revenue they're actually bringing on. 
And then as you go on, uh, the ratios have actually gotten better in Cash App's favor. So before they were 133%, now all the way to 224%. They're actually getting more efficient. That's a really good uh, thing to show off in Cash App's favor here. Now, we can see whenever we're looking at this customer acquisition cost difference, the difference between $220 and having a dollar, they are acquiring a customer for 0.5% of what SoFi is acquiring them for. And that CAC to ARPU ratio difference is 10X, okay? Let's help visualize this, however, as we go on. Uh, before we actually look at the trends, this is just the difference between SoFi and Cash App and Nubank. Now, this doesn't mean that Cash App's uh, customer acquisition cost is terrible. This actually should highlight how amazing Cash App and Nubank is. Whenever you actually start looking at legacy banks, they're gonna be even much, much higher then SoFi's here, and then whenever you're looking at their customer acquisition cost to ARPU ratio, it'll be even lower than SoFi's. Although SoFi's looks bottomed out, they would be even lower. But just goes to show you how amazing Cash App and Nubank are. Now, customer payoff, now the colors will really help you guys understand here. Nubank, for example, would be acquiring a customer for about 115% at the rate that Cash App is. Now, that is to Cash App's favor, but that's the only quarter in the entire time that, that Nubank has ever paid more for a client than Cash App. Every other quarter, including the most recent one, was like 74%. The one before that, 45%. And then the actual ARPU ratio is much to, uh, to Nubank's, uh, you know, uh, actual benefit aside from recent or, or, you know, quarters before it at 400%. This has actually gone down to only 135%. So, so Cash App is closing that gap, but is still like, you know, New Bank is just so, so excellent. Same thing with SoFi versus Cash App, or even I like looking at New Bank versus SoFi here, because it really goes to show you the true difference. Look at the difference between New Bank and SoFi 25x in their CAC to ARPU ratios or efficacy, and then their CAC difference, they're acquiring a customer at only 2.47%. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's jump on to the next part here, however. Uh, you guys can return to that whenever you need. But let's look at net incomes. Net incomes for SoFi have been negative across the board as they've been trying to turn up and be more and more of an efficient company overall. That's how we look at the net differences to sort of see how much closer to profitability they were than in previous quarters. Or same thing for Nubank, they've been trying to get more and more profitable, but have actually in recent times broke through. Then look at these actual percentages. They are absolutely skyrocketing in their profitability versus how much revenue they're actually bringing on, which means their margins are expanding, right? If, they, if this number was growing and it was just staying at 100%, that just means that the business is growing overall. If this percentage is increasing the way you're seeing, 104, 108, 112, that means that the actual net income uh, you know, margin is getting that much better. Very, very good. Block used to be profitable and now is actually not, dropping into uh, much deeper, deeper losses. Um, but the actual margins aren't too bad because the revenue growth rates are very, very high for that company. I'll just help visualize this. This is where that one chart that wasn't being able to be seen, that is actually the net income difference. You guys can see it right there. The only thing is, and I tried to fix this, but I'm not very good at spreadsheets, okay? Uh, the line for actual zero net income, both not negative or positive, is right here. But the line for 100% net difference is up here. I don't know how to actually lower that down. I tried a bunch of things, didn't seem like working, whatever. Is what it is. Okay, last but not least before we jump into valuation is actually dilution, okay? Whenever we're actually looking at these companies, usually hyper growth companies come with a lot of dilution, meaning that although the company is growing a lot, you might not be even getting the benefits of that because they're giving it to things like their own employees through stock based compensation. Now, let's look at dilution as this is not really uh, covered very often and it actually wasn't added to our previous, uh, you know, comparisons between these companies. But uh, SoFi's compensation has been quite strong, especially whenever you look at stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue, getting as high as 26.99%. I think that's the highest across the board between all the companies. However, dropping down all the way to 15%, 
Uh, same thing with Nubank, however, they've gotten as high as 19.96%. I think that was actually the period where they IPO'd. But then after that, dropping down 9%, 14%, 8, 5, 6, 4, 3, and 3.5. Uh, it is, is just continuously dropping at this point. Cash App, on the other hand, not really. The percentages have actually climbed, even though they said they were going to start managing it a little bit better, 9.4, 9.6, 9.7, 10%. That's not what you want to see, right? So to help visualize this, I've added in some new charts as well. So as you can see, SoFi right here has been doing okay, all right? They were bringing down their stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue just in the most recent quarter has ticked up uh, quite a lot, and the percentage of revenue also ticked up. Whereas Nubank, the most recent quarter did tick up, but the actual amount of stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue went down. Looking over at Cash App, nothing's really ticking down at all. This is up and both as a percentage of revenue and as a uh, absolute number as well. So whenever looking at stock-based compensation, look like visualizing all these charts together, you can see SoFi by far the highest up here, then Nubank or sorry, then cash app in the most recent quarters. It used to be New Bank was higher before, uh, but actually uh, cash app kind of took their place as being the middle of the way. And then, you know, New Bank continuously dropping off, being the lowest in terms of dilution as well. Just going through these before we look at valuation, because that is very, very important as well. I don't know if you're spotting a trend here, but New Bank is something to really look at, Okay. New bank customer, uh, cu customers, by far, growing faster than any of them. Revenue, skyrocketing even faster than any of them as well. The trend rates are just unbelievable. Uh, revenue per member, uh, you know, New Bank is also the fastest growing. Customer acquisition cost is growing for, for New Bank. Actually, might even pass cash apps. We're, 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 we're not certain. In the most recent quarters, their, their customer acquisition cost has gone up. But that being said, currently still the lowest uh, across the board. And then uh, in terms of actual dilution, also New Bank is by far the lowest as well. I mean, this valuation better be off the charts to show how, how great this company is really must come with a high valuation. Let's take a look. Okay, taking a look at valuation, we could see a couple things already that stand out to me. One, market cap for Nubank and Block are almost identical. Okay, they're about the exact same size of company. Whereas SoFi is a much smaller company, you know, just even disregarding all of the valuations. Ford PE ratio, by far, Nubank is the highest. SoFi in the future is not even being priced out to be profitable right now. Uh, that will change. Price to sales ratio is in favor of block. This is the true price to sales ratio. I have excluded Bitcoin. So this is the actual revenue. Uh, it's about three times right now. Uh, SoFi 4.2 and then New Bank at the highest 5.46. Still much lower than it was last period. I think it was like 10, uh, 10 times where SoFi was like four. So this has come down drastically just because the rate in which the company is growing is, is crazy, but the actual price of the stock has stayed the same. That being said, price to book ratio, $1.40, uh, sorry, not $1.47, but 1.47 times, six times, 1.9 times. So once again, New Bank, whenever looked at a price to book ratio, which a lot of people like to look at banks that way, is definitely much higher valuated. Uh, percentage of insider holdings, New Bank takes the cake, even though this is a 10-year-old company. Uh, you know what? Across the board, insiders are not selling this company. Funny enough, uh, one actually did very, very recently, but this has actually changed to uh, include that effect as well, and it hasn't changed much. I think they, like the CEO sold 3% of his uh, shares in order to uh, put it towards philanthropy and, and help with other charitable donations. That being said, institutions, okay? Institutional holdings by far favors the likes of Block, then New Bank, and all the way down here means SoFi, which could actually be a very good thing for SoFi. If, for example, they do get re-rated and the growth does start to pick up for SoFi, that means that this stock could absolutely skyrocket. Same thing with the short percentage of shares. It is much, much in favor of being short uh, in terms of SoFi. People do not like this company, but that also does lead to, if they're wrong, the share price could absolutely skyrocket. The opposite for New Bank. Everyone knows this is an amazing company. No one is betting against it. Only 1% short. That's even, you know, 
way less than half the amount that Block is being uh, shorted for. So it's almost like everyone knows Nubank is a great grower and no one's really sort of, you know, calling their bluff. Cash and debts, okay? Uh, I mean, if, if we're not seeing the trend already, three to six, six billion to one, uh, six billion to 5.3 billion, this is, uh, this is in favor. Nubank wins the charts, I mean, here. In terms of valuation, I'll let you guys decide on what you think. I mean, the price to sales ratio has really, really closed. Like the gap has closed for new banks so, so much. Uh, it's definitely looking like a more favorable company, in my opinion. And I'm going to start growing my position in new bank again. Um, I, I think this is an $11 stock all day around. So uh, and should be probably the highest valuated company across the board here, let alone like whenever you're talking about, you know, total revenue that these businesses are bringing in versus how much net income. I mean, like new bank is something special here, but I'll let you guys do your own due diligence. This is just the way I'm looking at some of these. It's a fun uh, way to look at the company. It helps me with my own confirmation bias. Uh, and that's all it really is. This is entertainment. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you guys hit the like, maybe subscribe down below. 